Woo! Liverpool four. Woo! Palace three. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, my heart, yeah, was pumping out my chest, cuz. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. Listen, four three. I take that. Not a problem. But. I don't know if I, I don't know how, how, how much these games I've got in me. Uh, it's been a while, yeah, since that, when you've seen some of those games, you're thinking, this, it, some of the defending, that's, that, that corner we let in, yeah? That's something that reminds me of some of the shit that we used to do back in the day with some of the defencing. But to win that game, when Sadio scored, that was, I thought that was it. The relief looked up in the skies and you, sh- you called it as well. He goes, you know what? Palace better not score now, yeah? Cause it, and that's, that's exactly what happened. Maya's goal. I said to him, I goes, if Palace score now, I goes, this is going to, you know, obviously it's going to be a real tough end to this game. And they just popped up the other end, literally just rolled it into the goal. I was thinking, hold on a minute, it's like a training drill. Do you know what I mean? But, oh. Hey, that was a tough three points. Three, that three points meant everything. Every, the, Crystal Palace has been a bogey team for us for time. And it was no surprise. Royal Hodgson, all these records and that, pulling out like teams, um, Royal Hodgson teams in Anfield don't concede goals, all this yeah. kind of stuff. But boy, Liverpool worked hard. There was some strong... In the first half, even when we went in 1-0 down, I wasn't even pissed. I don't know about you. Like I said, you yeah. know what? Liverpool can't do much more than this. They're actually playing really good football and they were taking a risk by pushing up a lot of people and trying to push them high up the pitch. And obviously, you know, Crystal Palace can counter-attack really well and that's exactly what they did. And I think, overall, Liverpool played well. I think it was a really good performance. Or do you disagree? Uh, I thought they played okay. I don't think they played... I don't think they were amazing. The one thing I, I think was it, that is impressive and I think it has to be mentioned is that the fact, even though Robertson and Milner were flying forward, it's the precision in the passing from the likes of Fabinho and, and Henderson today. Is, you know, getting that ball out to those guys who were pushed up the pitch is not as easy as it looks. Because as a defender, you've got to make a decision. I'll stay. When the ball goes out, then I'm going to engage. So that ball's got to be perfect because that defender's anticipating it. Um, I thought... Palace tactically were very, very clued on. They've got some serious pace in that team. I thought Zaha was causing absolute havoc. Mm. Um, Townsend done all right. Making the, he was making the, when Zaha was uh, making those runs, his that that out to in run and he's hitting the penalty spot was just it's just hard to defend against. I don't think the first goal I thought that was a good goal. I don't think you know they've hit us on the break. We talked about it whilst the game was going on, but there's that's probably the downside to having that press because. It took one pass, and obviously it was a risk from Sacco because I think he, you know, you could lose it equally. But just like it's like the, it's like the that's the, the sort of cat and mouse thing that situation you find yourself in because if Liverpool go and press, which they did, and win it back, then they're in on goal and they've got bodies flooding forward. But on the flip side, when they beat the press, they had men flooding forward, and we had six men out of the game. Mm. So you know, it's it's that that's the sort of I think that's the whole the risk of playing uh, high press and, and and stuff like that. And I thought Palace tactically were quite clever because they looked like they could score pretty much all the time going forward, didn't they? When on the break, and that's I know it sounds like I'm being dramatic, but it's true. When they were going forward, you're watching, you're thinking, flipping now they got bodies flooding forward here. If are you had a bit more quality, you yeah. know, they'd, they'd, poor they'd, poor they'd yeah, poor decision maker. I thought Connor, when Wickham came on, he looked an absolute absolute unit. You can see where he's been. He's been eating weights since he's, <laughs> when he's been um, off injured, but. But you yeah. know what? Hats off to Milner to come in to put in that position and then go on against Zaha, who's fucking probably one of the best wingers right now and causing all kinds of havoc. So he did well to keep him as quiet as he could. But there was loads of times where you knew that it was nowhere what Milner could do. You tried to show him inside sometimes because you, you know Zaha can go both ways. And there was times that there's no there's no physical way that even Milner could try to keep up with Zaha. But I think for him, to, uh, me personally, I think to come in and do that job and right back. When I agree out, with you. Yeah. I agree with you. But my only my, my the flip side I'll put to you is now he's been in that team as an experienced head. To do what he did at the end, to leave us down to 10 men as an experienced player, yeah. that's my only criticism that I'd have. That was a shit ball from Hendo. I mean, Hendo had a great game. I'm not going to say Hendo. I thought his um, variety of passing today was perfect. He put some through balls in for, um, to get into the attack and the long balls. I think he did well. But that ball that he gave towards the end at the timing was poor. Um, and like, you're right, though. I think Milner could have pulled out that. He had enough time to think about that mm. challenge before to get in. And uh, it's one of those situations where you just get your body in the way and just beat an extra body this side. But... We've said it before. Moving, looking at another player, Sadi Mane. How frustrating that he, that guy can be. Mm. He can he can make some mad, dumb, dumb, dumby decisions. But today, that finish. But even some of the stuff that he did towards the end of the game, like his hold up play, getting us throws, getting us corners. He was actually doing some great decisions towards the end of that game. My question that I want to put post to everybody is: Everyone's got a lot to say about Genie Wijnaldum. Genie Wijnaldum. Oh, what does he do? What does he do? Is he even? You know when he's not there. That's my point. Today. today you would want. You would want. I thought you were gonna say the same thing to me. You'd want him doubling up on Zaha. Yeah, I, I was screaming, just saying, "Oh, 
if only we had Genie now to put on. Because we look at the bench, I was thinking, you're not going to put on Moreno in this situation. Not never. <laughs> uh, Lalana, I was thinking, the guy's too attacking. Uh, look at Sturridge, Camacho, Origi. And I was like, thinking, you know what? Just put Origi on someone to double up and just for a bit of legs. And that, that does time that you look at the thing, you say, what? Well, Genie now would be perfect to bring on. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The only thing I'm, I'm going to say is going to the two, mid two midfielders that started alongside Hendo, Naby Keita and Fabinho. You can't start nowhere else but Fabinho. For me, I thought he was fantastic. He was epic today. He was epic. Like, and it's like, the, you can see the look on Liverpool fans' faces when he's injured. Everyone's like, the whole stadium went quiet. <laughs> the whole stadium went quiet. Yeah, you know I mean, it's a shame because he's been growing into that role. Hopefully, there's nothing serious because we can really do without the injuries. But on the flip side, Naby Keita. Naby, 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 Naby. I, look, I'm happy he's playing because that's the only way he's going to get up to, up to speed with, what, with what's happening in the Premier League. But today, I'm just i scratching my head thinking, what did he really offer us? I know there was a goal, uh, Firmino's goal, that he th uh, fed that pass through. But... Shaq came on within about two minutes give me the ball screaming for and it and it's penetrating passes it's, penetrating it's the penetrative passes, passes. And, I don't know man it's, it wasn't a good game yeah I mean, no, I don't think it was I don't think it was a terrible game no, by no, any stretch of the just, imagination yeah. it's just one of those situations where you think in that situation if if Shakiri was playing I, I would be more comfortable with Shakiri playing that position over him and that's just because I just feel that, that like, he's struggling at the moment you can see he's a bit low in confidence the decision making is a little bit out um, there's a few times yeah, today, off the ball as well. Yeah, there's a few times today. I think you said it when when we were we were driving forward and you were like, I tell you what, I wish it was Mane with that injection. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you know, uh, Kate is kind of one pace, and whereas Mane has that injection. So it was just a few times today when you look at it and you think, you know, because you know he took out the wide position and you think, ah, you just need him to, and you appreciate how good Mane is in those positions when someone else has to do it and they can't quite have that burst I mean even Robertson for how good he is on the overlaps he hasn't got that acceleration over that 5-10 yards which Mane gives you so I'd say it's it's one of those situations where it's good to see him playing because minutes is what he needs but I don't know it seems like he's got a long way to go but Fabinho on the other hand he looked similar didn't he when he first came now he's playing those passes the balls the, the, the goals were fortunate I'll make no bones about that. The gods are with us. but The gods were trying to help us at all costs today. So I think this is nice for Liverpool fans to have actually a bit of luck. But the thing is, Liverpool created their own luck. I mean, Liverpool had so much of the ball. They did so well. And I think, that's what I'm saying. I think they played really well and they deserved some of those luck. I mean, Salah's goal, was that... Did you mean that? Is that genius? Or is that just one of those situations where he tried to bring it down and realise that, oh, I'm actually a bit further away than I thought. And to stretch for it. So I don't know. But their know. goalkeeper... Oh, Julian Sparone. <laughs> He's been on the Peronis, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he's been on the Peronis. Well, Julian Peroni, before he came out, he's a little bit. Whoa. I don't know what that say was about, but boy, thank you very much. Brother, much well, it, it. it looked like he was out. He's getting waved before the game, <laughs> and then the phone said, "Bruv, there's two mates that are injured." He was just there. Oh fuck! Shit. <laughs> oh, shit! Pick up my gloves, babe. Where's my gloves? <laughs> and the thing is, uh, big shout out to Matip. I thought he had a great game when he came out. The when he came out, you use that word too freely for me, bro. It wasn't. It was good, but defensively, we could see three goals. Come on, man. You Come on, three nah, goals. bro. You're taking the piss. Matip had a good game. What, what did Matip do wrong today? Good game. Thank you. That's what, what I wanted. What did he do wrong? Well, we conceded three goals, didn't it? But tell me what Matip did wrong today. That's what I'm saying to you. You're saying that we conceded three goals. Yes, but you just can't blame anything. I thought Matip. Yeah, no, had I'm, not, a good I'm game. not. I'm not blaming him. But yeah, he had a good game. He's not a great game. He's had a great game. You so don't why didn't he have a great goals. game? Because we we conceded three goals, and everyone's everyone's culpable. If you're, back, if you're back four or back five, culpable. Well, I thought Matic came in, had a great game. When he came out with the ball from the back, he was looking very confident, picks out perfect passes on the, through the air and through the ground. And I think he, sometimes that's what VVD all the, uh, time, does all the time. But I think uh, Matic did a great job on that today. And I think, uh, tr um, not Trent, uh, Robbo, what do you think about his performance? Oh, the guy's just relentless. Consistent. Yeah, he's relentless. He deserves his contract. If there's one person that deserves that contract, it's him. Mm. It's great to see a team, Liverpool players, not running down their contracts. You know, we've seen it with Emery, we've seen it with Ramsey at Arsenal. You know, these players run down their contracts. It's good to have the, the club have the power um, over, over that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I see it from both perspectives because players like, for example, Moreno, don't get me wrong, I don't think he's good enough to play on that side, my personal opinion. But... Um, He's, he's going to run his contract down now. So it's like, well, as a player, he's probably thinking, I can't wait to get out of this. This is a hellhole for me, right? So I can see from both perspectives. But Robertson, to come in from Hull, who got relegated, to play as well as he has, to be as consistent as he has been, he deserves it. Trent deserves his contract. There's no denying that whatsoever. It's just interesting now. I mean, I heard that there was that bid for that Felix or something from Benfica, Benfica for 60 yeah. odd million. It'd be interesting because I think there needs something, there needs to be reinforcements. But it looks like he's really trimming the fat. 
really trimming it at the moment. He's on a drive to do that. So it'll be interesting to see who comes in. I'd like to ask people who they think we need realistically. Don't get me wrong. I know people will be like, oh yeah, Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo, very nice. But realistically, what 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 we can get. What do we need? What do people want? And who do we want to see as in reinforcements? What do people think of our performance on the whole? Um, do you think it was it was a good game of football? That was a team that's attacked us and we've picked them off, or do you think that it, it was it was alarming? Are you worried? Um, and that, that those would be the points I'd like to know what other people's thoughts are. Yeah. Who, who's your man of the match today? Fabinho. I mean, I'll, and I'll, I'll be close to giving it to Matip. But like I said, I think you had a good, good game. Great game. So even you don't know, bro. Yeah, bro. Man's yeah. throwing around the word great, bro. Great. Get out of All here. Right. Matip, bro. Man of the match. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Fabinho for me. I thought Fabinho was in levels today. When he went off, I was actually shook. I was actually worried. I hope, it, I hope it's not. I mean, we got Trent coming back. We got, I think Gomez coming back shortly as well. Yeah, but they're heading to Dubai anyway. Uh, nice little bit of sun in that. Get me. Some bit of <laughs> Uh, so on to the next one. It's nice now. Let's sit back and watch Arsenal versus Chelsea. Let's see what happens there. It's nice to get your three points just, just to let the other teams go on. Now, over to Man City and see what they do. I don't see how this will cause any upsets there. Do you, what do you reckon? The new manager. Mm, yeah. I don't know even got a new manager. I've got a caretaker probably. It could be a 9 nil, bro. It Seriously, could be, it could be a Burton all over, but we shall see. But yeah, Palace is always going to be a tough game. On to, I think, Leicester next, I think. We've got a nice little break. Yeah. So uh, until then, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Peace.